That's took me by surprise. I didn't expect to be on so soon. <laughs> well, I better start writing it. Good to see you. It's lovely to be with you again. Um, you know, when Chris asked me, I didn't check the football, uh, um, you know, what's it, what's it called, the, uh, the schedule. And then a couple of weeks ago, she said, he's still all right. And I'm like, yeah, England won't get anywhere near, will they? So, you know, there we go. Uh, we're going to be in the uh, in the book of Galatians uh, this evening. If you've uh, if you've got a Bible, I'm going to read uh, uh, a bit of Galatians in a, in a minute. Um, I'd uh, I prepared a word um, uh, last week uh, for this evening, and and had kind of ruminated on it, and thought that's that's the right thing. And then today, I've just been thinking all day. That's not that's not the thing that God's got for you uh, as a church, and it's really freaky that as a preacher. I mean, I've done this. I do this as for a living, believe it or not, and uh, you know I do this, you know, uh, weekly, and have preached regularly since, um, you know, I was in my early thirties. And occasionally, over the years, God's gone, "Don't do that, do this." And I had one of those moments tonight as we're as we're parking, uh, the Lord dropped something into my head, and then as we sat there, Albert said, "You're not preparing your message now, are you?" And I'm like, "Well, actually, <laughs> kind of." Uh, uh, we, we are, I was going to be in Galatians anyway, and we're, going to, we're still going to be there, but I, I want us to think about the early bits of Galatians, because if you want a title for the book of Galatians, it's give me liberty or give me death. And, and we start, Indra talked about being uh, grown up in the Catholic Church and some of the, some of the, some of the um, extras, if you like, that get added to the gospel. And, uh, and I'm sure we think we're immune from that stuff, but actually we're probably not. And we need sometimes to just have a little look at ourselves and go, what is the Lord saying to us today? I have the, uh, the joy of going to America occasionally. My uh, uncle, I'm in the family business. My uncle was called uh, to be a Baptist minister in the 1970s to the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, a beautiful bit of the world. And so since I was a child, we've gone back and to. He's my, he was my dad's identical twin. So, we've, you know, I've, I've been out there many times. I've had cousins uh, visit us as the, and, and it's a real special time in America to be there on the 4th of July uh, and uh, whenever I go there on the 4th of July I wear my Make America Great Britain Again t-shirt said that one this, you know, let that one like, stick in a little bit you know and it's you know uh, if you wear that at night in the small town my cousin lives in you could get shot but as long as you wear it you know during the daytime you know it's uh, uh, it's okay so I want to think about uh, liberty or death. I want to read you something that Patrick uh, Henry wrote in the 1770s, speaking against the British. So if you're not British this morning, you can, uh, it's not the morning, is it? If you're not British this evening, you can cheer along. It is vain, sir, to extenuate the matter. Gentlemen, gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war has actually begun. The next scale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears a clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? What is it that gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. I feel like you should cheer that one. I know you're not, uh, you know, I know you're not looking for independence from the UK right now in in Warrington. But we'll, uh, but this is this is the word that God gives us. Uh, this is the gospel. It is a gospel of liberty, of life. We're going to read uh, the first ten verses uh, of Galatians. Paul, an apostle, sent not from men nor by man, but by Jesus Christ. And God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers with me to the churches in Galatia. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom we glory for ever and ever. Amen. Starts well, doesn't it? And then, he, then it gets a bit grim. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and are running to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, evidently some people are throwing you into confusion and, and are trying to, to, to pervert the gospel of Christ. 
But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let him be eternally condemned. As we've already said, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel other than that that you accepted, let him be eternally condemned. Am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please my men? If I were trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not something that man made up. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by a revelation from Jesus Christ. Good, uh, good words there. Paul is, uh, is writing to, uh, to Galatia, what would now be northern uh, Turkey, and it is, it's been invaded some time before by Gauls, by Celts. There's a few Celts uh, in the room. There's a few Vikings in the room. There's people from all over the place, isn't it, in this room? But he's writing to these people in, uh, in, in, in um, what would now be northern Turkey. And, uh, and he's, th- these are probably the churches that he's planted. So these are people he knows, or, or, or some of them he knows. He's got, he's got relationship with them. So he's writing to people he knows, and, and he's really, really worried about them. And he, come, he comes to them, he speaks to them with this liberty that he has. And he's got this liberty to write to them because of the relationship he's got with them and because of the relationship he's got with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and he's very specific, isn't he, about his authority. Uh, it's not just because he planted some churches. He starts, Paul, an apostle, sent not from men, nor by, nor by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. It's really specific about who it is that's given him the authority to preach. And we need to be the same. We're not sent by people. So whatever situation you're in this week, wherever you find yourself, where you get to chat about Jesus, you come with authority. You have this liberty uh, to preach. I'm an apostle, a sent one. It's a great phrase that. We don't use that word very often in the church, do we? And if you look at uh, what the New Testament describes about the way we we organize church. Uh, We talk about uh, pastors, don't we? We talk about shepherds and we talk about preachers. And we might talk about evangelists. We don't very often talk about apostles. I mean, the more formal churches have, 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 have made them into bishops, haven't they? But, but the word is just a normal Greek word. It's, it's not a special religious word. It's, a not, it's not a special word that Paul makes up. He does, he does that sometimes. Like all the New Testament, just Testament writers do that sometimes. But Paul is saying, I'm just a sent person. And it, it, it depends on who sends you. It depends on your authority. That's right, isn't it? So, you know, I'm not saying you should all get badges saying apostles, so-and-so. But when you find yourselves in an opportunity to talk about Jesus this week, that's who you are. You are a sent one. We, uh, we, we, I think, you know, we, we shy away from it, maybe because it sounds a bit, a bit big-headed, sounds a bit like bigger than, than we are. Maybe we link it with signs and wonders. That's often the case. And you think, well, I've never seen anybody healed, so I can't call myself that. Well, it doesn't matter about what you call yourself. But this is about who sent you. Jesus has sent Paul. The Father uh, has sent Paul. And he brings this word to them. But he brings this word to them from the, from the church that he's with. So he includes people. And I love that about Paul when he writes. He always includes people. So, so there's a, um, I don't know if you've ever picked up in 1, 1 Corinthians where Paul writes from himself and Sosthenes. And Sosthenes is that, is that synagogue ruler that gets beaten up in Acts and somehow becomes a follower of Jesus. Look at that. Becomes a follower of Jesus, ends up on Paul's team, and ends up getting part of the credit for the writing of 1 Corinthians. He does this all the time. He pulls people in. What are we doing to do that? What are we doing? Say, come, come with me. Come with me to share faith. It's great, great that you're leading today. It's like, oh, you've seen, haven't you? You're watching something. Oh, have a go. Come on, Indra, you can do it. Okay, I'll have a go. Done well so far. He's bringing this, this message, not just from himself, not just from the Lord, but from the church, from those who've traveled with him. And he brings this really strong word. He says, if anybody, if anybody, even myself, if I bring a word that isn't from God, that isn't in line with the gospel, then you need to throw it out. You need to reject it. You need to run away from it. No matter how good the qualifications are, historically we've we've thought of these 
uh, of these people in Galatians, the, the enemy, if you like, in, in Galatians, uh, they're often called the Judaizers, and you might have heard that. And we're not really sure who they are, except that they're part of the church. So, so they're not, it's not like a, a cult has bought the house next door to your church here. Uh, and they're kind of throwing stones over the wall. It's not like that. It's not like uh, people from the mosque are coming to attack you, or people from the Hindu temple. It's not, it's not like that. These, these are people who, who have come from inside. The Jesus people. But they're saying, oh, you, you, you haven't quite got, you haven't quite got what you need. You need a bit more. So Paul has this liberty to speak. And, and, it, and it is a liberty of calling. He knows that he's called. And I think that is important for us as followers of Jesus, that we know that we are called. We are chosen and we are called. What an amazing thing. We are chosen and we are called. He's at peace uh, with who he is. God has called me and God has sent me and he sent me to you and I've got a word for you I've got a word that you need to hear because people have been pushing in getting in the way putting something in between you and the Lord Jesus has this liberty uh, to speak and he says death death to those who bring chains that's Patrick Henry but that's what Paul's saying in Galatians death to those who bring chains, death to those who bring anything that isn't pure Jesus. In the, in the 12 letters that Paul writes, this is the only one that doesn't start with something positive. Now, lots of us have done those courses, haven't we, at work, where they say, have you got something negative to say? What is it, two positives and a negative? Or, or positive, negative, positive, you know those things? You know, I do a lot of critique of preachers, and you can do that to me today. You know, and they all say, oh, start something positive, don't you? Say, well, they all fell asleep, Nick, but apart from that, you know, it was great. You know, I don't say, oh, we heard that joke last week and the week before and the week before. Start with something positive. But in Galatians, he doesn't, he is so angry. And we should be the same. Anything, anything that gets in between people and Jesus should make us cross, should get us angry. What we're doing about that he, uh, he, he, hasn't, he hasn't been on that course where it says say something positive before you say something negative. He hasn't done that course. He is just go for, goes for it. And, it, and it's, it is pretty strong. It's a, little bit of, it's a little bit of what we might call hyperbole. He's, uh, you know, I'm astonished. I'm astonished. Anybody ever said to you they're disappointed in you? Oh. You know, when you were, I was a, I was a, bit, of a, you know, a bit of a tear away as a teenager. Uh, my older brother was worse, which is always better for you because it makes you look better, right? But, you know, if your mum said, I'm disappointed, I'm not angry, oh, it's like, isn't it? That's what, that's what Paul does to the church in Galatia. I'm disappointed that these things uh, have happened. We, um, we perhaps have seen the other way as a culture. We never say anything negative. You know, it's, sometimes you turn on the news and you think, that's really terrible. And they don't want to condemn anybody. They don't want to condemn anything. But Paul is he's definitely old school. He's got this. I am astonished. I'm amazed that you're turning away from the good news. And if you think about that, what's the opposite of good news? It's bad news, isn't it? What's the opposite of good news? So we think what the Judaizers are doing is saying, you've met, you've met Jesus. That's amazing. But you know Jesus was Jewish. Did, did you know that? And you know, and you know this is how Jesus lived his life. You know, did you know that? And you know some of the things that Jesus did? You should do them things. You know Jesus was circumcised. Well, if you're a woman in that congregation, you're going, great. <laughs> but if you're a man, you're going, not so great. Very painful. And you know you can't eat that. And you know you can't go there. And you know you have to sit here, and you can't sit there. And you know, and you know, and you know, and you know. And they start to add things. And the church does that. We do it all the time. We do it all the time. We put things, it's called tradition. This is how we do it here. But if we're not careful, it becomes something that brings death and not life. And he's not happy because he's saying this is not good news. This is bad news. He calls it, he calls it a perversion. Paul's perversion, Paul's enemy is interesting. 
because it's an enemy within within the camp it's christians and it's very hard to spot it's very hard to spot when i was a, i was Angie and i used to live in buckinghamshire and uh, i was a pastor of a church there associate pastor there and i had a friend who who uh, she came to faith in jesus and uh, and she came to faith in jesus and the person who led her to faith said the only bible you can use is the king james version and she was part of the church that, that we led and uh and you, you can you can hold that view if you want it's not correct because uh, the king james version is a translation you know like the niv is a translation like the esv is a translation like the message is a translation i mean if you want to read the greek fantastic but most of us are reading a translation and it was really hard because i had to say to a, your friend who's led you to jesus fantastic but they're not right that's not correct because that's not what the scripture says like the scripture says that the word of God is unchanging but it's written in a way that you can understand it read it in, in such a way that you can understand he, he's, he, he attacks them in many ways he challenges them in many ways but he challenges them with something that is so important grace and peace grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ the gospel in two words grace and peace grace the goodness of god to those who are not good that's you that's me god's grace we don't believe in karma as christians we don't believe that you get i mean jesus says you reap what you sow but then he says if you sow righteousness actually if you come to me you will reap something that you haven't sowed it's an amazing thing that it's an amazing offer that christianity has every other religion you, you reap what you sow. The fatalism of Islam takes us nowhere. It's a hopeless Islam. If you've got, if you've got Muslim friends, I mean, it's, it's, if you've got Muslim friends, it's not the thing to do to say Islam is hopeless. But if you get into those conversations, tell them about the grace of Jesus Christ. That he says, come to me, you who are hopeless, and I will give you hope. They used to say, didn't they, in Sunday school, it's God's riches at Christ's expense. What an amazing thing. But also peace that the God of the universe is with us. That's the most amazing thing about being a Christian. You know, one of the one of the um, perversions that we've seen in the modern world is this, this health and wealth gospel, and and it's a perversion that has some truth, which is always difficult. So, so the Judaizers they had some truth. They saying we can't just live what we want. We need to live holy lives. So there's some truth there, isn't there? Uh, and we see that in the in in the prosperity gospel the, the scripture absolutely speaks of prosperity it absolutely does it says you know you follow jesus and life will change and the sociologists call it redemptive lift when you start to follow jesus your life changes and gets better it's amazing but also we're told that we will face persecutions we're also told that we'll have trials of many kinds how many kinds many anybody had that if 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 the if the pastor is telling you that uh, you just if you just follow jesus you will life will go good for you and it doesn't well, what does that do to your faith it's like that gym i don't go to the gym you can tell but it's like that gym rope thing where you've got two ropes yeah you know, we have prosperity in one hand victory the blessing of jesus amazing but we also have suffering and trials and life and difficulty in the other. And that's the joy of being a follower of Jesus. We have the peace in the middle of the storm. So Paul says, here we are. Here we are. Grace and peace to you. You don't need to add anything else. You don't need to add circumcision. You don't need to add any of these things. They're divisive. All you need is Jesus. Give me liberty or give me death. In verse 4 he says we uh, we who know jesus have been rescued from this evil age the the pharisees believed that the age would end badly the end would, the age would, would collapse when the messiah came and paul's picking that up because he was a pharisee he's picking that up and saying yeah the messiah has come 
and we have been rescued. Not, we're, not been, we're not being helicoptered out. We're still in it. But in it, we have liberty. And death no longer rules. Jesus starts a new age for us as we follow him. Don't let anything else get in the way. Don't let anything else trip you up. Don't let anything else be added to this. Because you have been rescued what an amazing thing you know we live in a we live in a culture that is that has all sorts of stuff going on that we maybe as christians would go i'm not doing that i'm not doing that i'm not doing that and sometimes what the church does is it, it hides and steps out of the culture and sometimes what the church does is it opens its doors and lets all of the culture in and actually what we need is somewhere in the middle to go, oh, we've been rescued from this. We can rescue others. We can't hide, because you can't rescue anybody if you're hiding. But neither can you just open the door and let it all come in. You have to go, oh, I know who I am. I know how I am. I have had this grace and peace. I've met this Jesus. He's forgiven me. He's given me life. And he's given me hope. You come. Paul sees uh, Jesus as a savior. It's an incredible thing that. The, the, the way we view the cross, we're going to talk, we're going to take communion uh, in a minute. And, and the, the New Testament talks about the cross in a number of different ways. And, and sometimes it's about the substitution, I don't know, get my teeth in, the substitutionary atonement of Jesus that he takes, he takes our sin on himself. It's incredible. But here Paul's talking about the victory of Jesus. It's Christus victor. That, that on the cross he nails he nails the sin, your sin, to the cross. Declares victory over sin and death and the devil. What an amazing thing. What an amazing thing. He said, look at this. Look what God has done. Do you want liberty or do you want death? It's a no-brainer, isn't it? Anybody choosing death? You know, it's an amazing thing. The... the, the um, yeah, that just that 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 it's a no choice. And Paul's saying to the church, be careful, because you're taking people back to a place that is dead. We need to be to a place of life. Give me liberty or give me death. So we're going to celebrate liberty now. We're going to celebrate liberty now. And that's what this does. That's what this celebrates. If you come here every week, you, you, I think you probably take communion most weeks, do you? I was just when I come, I don't know. Three times a month. So that's pretty regularly, isn't it? And, and it, can become a th- it can become a religious thing, can't it? It's just something we do. It's, it, it, it's so, those things so easy become just a thing. But actually, this is life. This is life. It is not death. It is the sign for the Christian. When you take this, when you eat this bread, it is life. Because Jesus is alive. When you drink this blood, it is life. Because the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. But the blood is shed. And when you drink it, you're saying, my sins are forgiven. What an amazing thing. What an amazing thing. Paul says, I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. He's he's so angry for them that they would step away from the life that they have inherited. And if you found yourself stepped away, if you found yourself in a place where you've gone off, yeah, you know, um, I like Jesus, but I like some other stuff as well. I'm going to take other things on board as well. You know, now's the time to, to confess your sins and receive his forgiveness. The, the scripture says we should examine ourselves. I mean, Paul actually is examining the Galatians, isn't he? But I'm not going to write a letter to you. I'm going to do what he says in, in Corinthians. He says, examine yourself. So we're just going to have a moment or two. To examine ourselves. Have I, have I started walking towards death when I should be walking towards liberty? 
Have I walked away from life? Let's just close our eyes. Have a moment or two. Lord, we thank you for the challenge of Galatians, Lord. We thank you for the challenge of the New Testament. That you call us to examine ourselves and to come back to a place of life. And we thank you that we can share this communion together. Thank you, Lord, for your body broken through us. Thank you for your blood poured out through us. Those who are going to help serve or come and serve up the grace. Jesus took bread and he broke it. And he said, This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, pour out the sins of men. Do this in the name of me. <coughs> Lord, thank you for your amazing word. Lord, we thank you for your amazing sacrifice. I want to thank you that you promised never to leave us <coughs> or forsake us. I want to pray that uh, as Paul challenges us here, that we would hang on to you and uh, that you would never let us go. <coughs> and Lord, I pray that uh, you give us a life this week ahead. And Lord, I pray that you go into uh, our, our normal lives, Lord, I pray <coughs> uh, that we would be apostles, Lord, that we would be sent once. Then we know that who sent us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, I pray you give us words uh, and pictures and encounters for people so they will meet you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen.